the key points are it's a randomized clinical trial with the objective of determining whether there's any advantage to giving a combination of radi radiation therapy and chemotherapy prior to esophageal cancer surgery compared with giving no radiation therapy, but chemotherapy before and after, and using two of the, well, three really of the best uh, and most often used regimens that are used internationally. So it's never really been done before to uh, address whether uh, giving chemotherapy alone as, composed, as, a, as compared with combination chemotherapy therapy and radiation therapy uh, uh, has uh, uh, has any significant significant difference so that's the, that's the trial it, the the control arm is the cross trial which was published in 2012 uh, Dutch trial and had a massive impact internationally and that's the multimodal arm with chemotherapy and radiation therapy prior to surgery and the experimental arm is uh, perioperative chemotherapy. So before and after chemotherapy using uh, what's called the MAGIC regimen uh, up to uh, 2018. And then since then, allowing the use of what's called the FLOT regimen, which uh, really arrived on the scene at ASCO in 2017 and was published uh, last year and has had a big impact internationally. So it's really a head-to-head -head between the two of them uh, in the most common type of esophageal cancer that we see, particularly in the Western world, known as adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. So that hasn't been done before. That was the purpose of the uh, the purpose of the trial, and what it's shown, bottom line, really, is that there is no suggestion at preliminary analysis of inferiority of the experimental arm, the chemotherapy, compared to the control arm, which is the multimodal, the cross combination therapy. They look like overlapping uh, overlapping curves at the first and second futility analysis. So at 70 uh, deaths and at 140 deaths, and they are pretty very much predicted to be uh, identical, but three-year survivals to date of 56 and 57%. So really no, really uh, no difference and a, a hazard ratio just, just above one. The other important elements of the trial are that uh, the other key points are that, you know, there is literature and some concerns from some other trials that giving radiation therapy to patients undergoing this type of major treatment and major surgery for esophageal cancer can uh, result in more stress to the lungs and more lung complications, pulmonary complications in the post-operative period, and that some of these can be fatal. So severe uh, lung complications and, and mortality. Uh, and uh, I think this trial uh, conclusively shows that that does not appear to be the case using the modern, certainly modern standards of delivery of radiation therapy, as well as having embedded within the trial uh, radiation therapy quality assurance, which is an unusual thing within a trial, and it's one of the key points of the trial design. And the other element of the trial design that's, that's different uh, and certainly uh, maybe uh, is unique because it hasn't been used before is to use the internationally accepted lexicon, if you like, of definitions for operative complications. So there's a strict standardization of, op of complication reporting that is not done before. And sometimes they're very poorly defined or not defined at all. And it's very difficult to interpret from published literature, but it couldn't be clearer from this literature because we're using that standardized uh, definitions uh, that was set up by an international esophageal complications consensus group. Uh, and unequivocally, that shows that there's no differences between the two. Therefore, therefore, any fears that are out there that modern day radiation therapy given at these doses and in this context adds to operative risk would appear to be dispelled from the trial results 
the inter- the the interim trial results at this at this point, and that's obviously very very unlikely to uh, to change because every patient uh, has gone through surgery at this uh, at this point. So the main points are two that 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 the survival is the primary endpoint is highly unlikely to change in further follow up. There's no inferiority of one versus the other. And secondly, that radiation therapy is, is appears safe in the operative context. And the third point is really to highlight uh, an apparent sort of paradox whereby the proxy measures of an effect of a treatment on the tumor, such as the pathological response rate, the major uh, pathological response rate or complete pathological response rate, or the tumor regression grade, the resection margins, all of those things were significantly in favor of giving radiation when you look at it at the primary tumor site. But uh, nonetheless, that did not translate into an improvement in the primary endpoint of overall survival. So it would be very interesting to see, and this will demand uh, longer follow-up, as to what the patterns of uh, of relapse will be. And it's possible that the, the chemotherapy arm, the systemic arm, if you like, with, with, a, with effective doses of chemotherapy may have a bigger impact on, on that sort of systemic relapse. And possibly, possibly the fact that the vast majority of patients has kind of a radical uh, res- resection of the esophagus at surgery with unblock um, resection and lymphadenectomy uh, that might compensate a little bit for what radiation therapy has been shown to have impact on in previous in previous studies. So there is a so at that element of the surgery, that element of the radiation therapy quality assurance probably factor into the to the trial uh, the trial data.